I spent two weeks shooting, editing, and producing this entire how I use zebras to expose for photography and videography video, and then completely scrapped it because I didn't love it. So this is the retake. What's up, welcome back to a fresh new video. And today, you asked for it. Survey went out on the last video about what video do you wanna see next, and it was a unanimous well, it was almost unanimous. People wanted to see how I use zebras to expose for photography and videography. Out of most of the videos that I've seen about how to use zebras, I think I do things a little bit differently. And right or wrong, it's been delivering consistent results for me, something that is my go-to method for getting exposure nailed, and it's exactly what we're gonna get into today. In this video, I'm gonna get into some general exposure values, how to get your zebra displays, what to even set them to, how I use them, and then a special note for all the Sony users out there at the end. The OG himself, Ansel Adams, put together a general exposure chart, which I'm gonna pop up on screen right now. And the basic understanding of this chart is that it runs from left to right, zero to 10, where zero is pure black, 10 is pure white, and as we go in between those numbers, what we find is the different shades of grays, different shades of blacks, different shades of highlights and whites that are in between that zero to 10. What I've also done on this is I've highlighted the skin tones for you for just a quick reference because I think those are some of the more important things to get dialed in the right way. How I use this chart in correlation with zebras is if you take any number on here, multiply it by 10, you're gonna get a zebra value. So let's pick on eight, multiply that by 10, add a percent to it and we get 80%. When we go in camera and start looking at setting zebra values, that's what we're talking about in correlation with this chart. The big takeaway from this chart is that you generally want to expose your subject to what corresponds to the value on the chart. So if I had a skin tone that I was aiming to get at seven on this chart, I'd want my zebra values to be at 70% for that skin tone. Landscapes get a little bit different where your entire scene is your subject and using your exposure values with your zebras is a little more complicated, but that's some level two stuff. Maybe we'll talk about that later. Today, I wanna to simply focus on using zebras to expose for a subject. I guess another point that's in that level two is getting creative, where like a silhouette shot, for example, where the subject is clearly the silhouette, but you wouldn't expose that to the actual skin tone in this example. Getting the zebra display is pretty easy if you're a mirrorless camera user. You just need to go into your menu system, find out how to toggle zebras on or off for live view, and then where to set the zebra values to. If you haven't seen the video I did about how I set up my A7S III for filmmaking, I'll link that up top, and that will get into all types of things, but definitely will show you how I use and reroute my custom buttons for my zebras for some quick workflows. And if you don't have an A7S III, that will definitely work for an FX3, but almost any Sony camera, it's gonna be fairly similar, though the menu might be a little bit different. For all the DSLR shooters out there, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky. You're gonna need something like an external monitor to be able to view live zebra displays while shooting video. But I know that if you're taking photos, you can have your zebra displays show in the preview after you take your image and you can use zebras that way. All right, this is the big one. What do we even set the zebra values to? And besides my live run through that I'm gonna show you right after this, this is probably one of the most important aspects of this entire video, because if you don't know what to set them to, then you're gonna have a hard time getting proper exposure in the first place. What to set the zebra values to is pretty easy for photography. I just go back to that chart and whatever your subject is, let's say it's a skin tone that you wanted at 60%, then you would just expose that skin tone to 60%, it being the subject of the scene, and take the shot. That will work whether you're shooting JPEG or you're shooting RAW, but nice thing with RAW, which is my preferred method, is that you have a little bit more flexibility in post for a lot of things, but particularly if you miss your exposure by a little bit, you have more flexibility to get that right in post. For video, it gets a little bit more complicated in regards to what should you set your zebra values to. We have things like log, we have different picture profiles, we have no picture profiles, we have correction LUTs, we have different correction LUTs, and they all are gonna respond differently to light and overall different to how you wanna set your zebra values. If all of that went way over your head, then I would strongly suggest that you shoot with not log, no picture profile, you just learn to shoot 
shoot right out of the camera and get your exposure tuned in. And if you're doing that, then you're gonna wanna go back to what I just said for photography. Just use the chart, get your subject exposed properly to what's on the chart, and you're gonna have an image that looks really good. Once you get good at that, absolutely start getting into different picture profiles, different log formats, because you're gonna be able to understand how to get proper exposure in the first place. And then when you get into those more complicated, those deeper cuts, you're gonna have much more success when you do that. I'm about to show you exactly what I set my zebra values to, but before I do that, I can't emphasize enough the importance of trial and error and test shots. What I'm gonna show you, which has been delivering very consistent results for me, was a byproduct of a ton of test shots, a ton of trial and error, a lot of getting shots into post that were all exposed slightly differently, getting those into post and trying a bunch of different things before finally landing on what works really well for me. If you haven't seen my custom picture profile video, I'm gonna link that up top. It's particularly good if you're an A7S III or an FX3 user, but you're still gonna get something from it if you're not. Anyways, for my custom picture profile, I shoot everything at exactly 15% higher than what's on the chart. So for example, my skin tone being on that paler side of the skin tone, I actually shoot that at 85%, which is 15% higher than what's recommended on this chart. That would be the same thing for a subject that maybe is supposed to be exposed at 50%, I would actually expose that to 65%. So slightly overexposing, but my custom picture profile allows me to preserve my highlights quite well and get a look that I have come to like a lot and that's been very consistent over time. And yeah, you heard that right, 15% high higher than what's on the chart. Welcome to the live portion of this video. We're about to spin around where I'm gonna jump in camera and I'm gonna show you exactly how I'd expose these subjects as well as my skin tone. But first I wanna give a shout out to my friends over at Cuts. Yes, I'm a part of the Cuts family and you can check the link out down below. It's a special link for you to check these t-shirts out if you don't have any yet. These things are fantastic for these types of videos. I also wear them on shoots, I'll wear them on date nights and meetings, all types of things. Fantastic brand, even better people over there. If you haven't got some yet, you gotta check these out. And this gray t-shirt is my favorite one, clearly. It's also gonna work really well for going back to those zebra values on that chart for being some type of gray, and we'll get to that in just a second. Quick note, like I said earlier, I'm gonna be using my custom picture profile, which means I'm gonna be exposing everything we talk about, whether it be my skin tone or this t-shirt, to 15% higher than the value suggested on the chart. And the big takeaway, write this down, is that we wanna be using zebras to tell us the exact value that we're trying to get, and then we wanna pull our exposure back just slightly when those zebras start to show up. I'm gonna be doing that today by increasing the ISO in the camera until I get the exposure that I want and then decreasing just slightly. And when I get to my skin tone, I'm gonna to do that same thing, but I'm gonna lock off the ISO and just adjust the light volume until it does the same thing where the zebras just barely appear and then we pull back slightly. You could also manage your exposure by messing with the aperture or shutter speed, but that, like some other things we talked about today, is maybe better safe for like a level two version of all of this. Keeping it simple, we're changing ISO and we're changing light. All right, let's do it. Getting exposure on these t-shirts is gonna be pretty easy. First thing I wanna do, going back to that chart, I would say that that gray t-shirt represents that stone or middle gray at 50%. For my custom picture profile, I know that I shoot 15% higher, so that would be 50 turning into 65. So I would go to my zebra level, C2 lower limit, and I would bring that up to 65 and hit enter. Now from there, anything that is in this scene that's at 65 or higher is gonna show zebras. The goal here is pretty simple. All I'm gonna be doing is let's bring that all the way down. I'm gonna be changing my exposure by using the ISO. I've got the shot locked off on the shutter at one over 60, which is doubling the frame rate for this scene of 30p. I like my aperture at f2.8, so we're just gonna bring the ISO up. And we're seeing zebras showing up in the scene, but I'm not worried about those areas. I'm worried about exposing for the subject. I just wanna be bringing my ISO up until those zebras start to appear on the gray t-shirt, which they are right now. So we know that that part of the t-shirt is at or slightly above 65% on the brightest parts. My next step, once I start barely seeing zebras, I bring it back one click or a third of a stop or just bring it back slightly to where those zebras disappear and that's exactly how I would expose this scene. That's it, done, and here's how it looks.
All right, let's get my skin tone dialed in. Yes, this is a very busy scene, but this is how I gotta have it set up to show you exactly how to do this. Again, I'm using my custom picture profile, so I'm exposing to 15% higher than what's on the chart, which means for my pale skin tone, I'm aiming for 85%. If I had a slightly darker shade, I'd bring that down by 10% and down by 10% for a darker shade from there and so forth. But the same rules apply just like for the t-shirts where the goal is gonna be to get the zebras to barely show up and then we're gonna pull back just slightly. And to do that, I've got the Amaran 100D connected to the Citus Link app and I'm gonna be just raising or lowering exposure to start to get those zebras to show up and then to disappear. This works the same way as it would if you're using the back of your camera screen, but I've got the Atomos Ninja 5 set to 85%. Increasing light is similar to what you'd be doing if you were increasing the ISO like we just did. So let's get my skin tone dialed in. All right, let's start introducing some light to show those zebras. So look at my forehead. That's where they're gonna start to show up first. I'm slowly increasing the light volume and you're starting to see them show up right on my forehead right now. So we know that the hottest parts of my skin tone are at or slightly above 85% in this case. And we're just gonna slowly bring that back until they completely disappear or just barely showing up. And here's how this scene looks. Quick note for all the Sony users out there, which I'm guessing is the majority of my channel. Back in my S-Log3 video, I was leaning on the Leeming Lutz. Le leaning on the Leeming Lutz. Say that five times fast. I was leaning on the Leeming Lutz to get proper exposure and show all of you how to use S-Log3 to get consistent results. And I still stand by 99% of that video, but what happened was Paul Leeming himself jumped in the comments and was like, you're not using zebras the exact perfect way, which was, uh, Great, pretty embarrassing there. Either way, he and I started a conversation and I wanna show you Sony users how to use your zebras properly because of what he was telling me. And here's what he said, which is essentially saying that the C2 lower limit option is how most cameras work in the first place where they're gonna hit that point that you set it to, but they're also gonna be constantly displaying all the values that are above that which is good because it'll allow you to see things like lights and other things that you're not super concerned about. When you use the standard set, the zebras that are overexposed by typically about 5% over what you've set it to, they disappear completely. So C2 lower limit keeps them on screen at all times. So there you have it. That's exactly how I use zebras to expose my images, both photography and videography. This method has been an absolute game changer for me when it comes to getting consistent results. Give this video a tap on the thumbs up if it has helped you out at all, and feel free to jump in the comments down below and let me know if you use a different method and why you like it, or if this method has started to produce good results for you. But don't jump in the comments and say that you just eyeball it. Don't do it. Y'all are awesome and I'm so glad that you're enjoying this channel. It means more to me than you know and I am committed to keeping these goods coming because I promise you, I'm just getting warmed up. But hey, that's gonna do it for me. My name is Sean DeWispeler and this channel is all about the skills behind the art of creativity. Photography, videography, gear, reviews, tutorials, and me being full-time in the fitness industry, it's always gonna have just a little bit of a fitness feel to it. Which, on that point, the vision for this channel is that it's a resource for all the creatives out there. A resource and a community for us to learn, connect, and everything that comes along with that. But maybe a little sub-vision is that it becomes the go-to resource for all the fitness professionals out there who wanna up their game when it comes to media. So if any of that is something that you're into, hit the subscribe button down below, and I'll look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. Take care. See ya. Let me explain the fitness thing. It's probably one of the most common questions that I get about people wondering if they can see some of the media that I produce. I say that I'm full-time in the fitness industry. What does that actually mean? I'm the VP of an international fitness brand. I also do all of our media, which means that I don't do media full-time for this company. I do a lot of other things, and the media that I do produce is mostly internal. It's coursework, it's education, it's some internal promotional things. That's all changing the second half of this year. Maybe even very, very soon, I'll be able to start to point all of you in the direction to check that stuff out. All right, see you.